Continuing on. I have a tetrahedral electronic geometry. Now I have four bonded atoms. So I have a bonded atom on every electron domain. We know that this bond angle now is, it started out as 109.5. Notice there are no lone pairs here. So assuming that these bonded atoms are all identical, then this is 109.5 degrees angle. And the name of this, again, because we have a bonded atom on every electron domain, the name of the electron domain geometry and the name of the molecule shape is the same. Moving on to five electron domain geometries. This is the first time where it really matters where we put the bonded atoms, because these are not equivalent positions. Remember the North Pole and South Pole positions are different from the equatorial positions. Their bond angles are different. So we're going to have to decide where we are going to put the two bonded atoms on here. And the general rule of thumb is, because lone pairs take up more space, they prefer to be around the equator where they can get a little bit further apart from their neighbors. Another way of saying that is, lone pairs will prefer to minimize the number of 90 degree neighbors that they have. And by going onto the equator, they will only have two 90 degree neighbors, whereas if they were at the North Pole or South Pole, they would have three 90 degree neighbors. So again, Lone pairs are going to preferentially go on the equatorial positions. So I've got two bonded atoms. That means I've got three of these are going to be lone pairs. And the lone pairs are going to be on the equatorial positions. And you can see at this point, once I have done that, I've got North Pole, South Pole, I've got a straight line. I've got a linear molecule. And we know that the angle here is 180 degrees. Again, a trigonal pyramid, electron geometry. Now I have three bonded atoms. I know that my first two are going to be on North Pole and South Pole positions. The third one must go around the equator. It doesn't matter which equatorial position it goes. But I'll put it there just to show you the shape that it forms. Now it's obvious that I have a line here and then a little branch going off there. And this is called a T shape. So if I turn it so you can see it, there's the T right there, right there. Remember we're ignoring the lone pairs. The T shaped is right there. And the bond angles, of course, are 90 degrees or approximately so, probably a little bit less. And then the bond angle between the North Pole and the South Pole, of course, would be 180 degrees there. So this is a T-shape molecule. All right, now we have a trigonal pyramid. Oops, I am sorry. This is, I've made a mistake. I need to fix this. These are, I just noticed my error. The electronic geometries are trigonal bipyramids, right? by pyramids by pyramids by pyramids we know that so these are trigonal by pyramids electronic geometries and linear t-shaped so now we have a trigonal by pyramid we have four bonded atoms so we've got north pole and south pole those are first and two more around the equator doesn't matter which two positions And now it is going to be a little bit difficult to show this without a model kit, which I don't have at my disposal right now. But this is called a seesaw. And when you have a model kit and you build it, you'll be able to see how if you place this, if you set this on a tabletop and you hold this lone pair in your hands, you will be able to rock it back and forth like a seesaw. 
So unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that right now without a model kit. But uh, once we get the model kits, we'll be able to demonstrate that. See, saw. It's a little bit difficult to see that uh, on paper in two dimensions. That brings us to a trigonal bipyramid electronic geometry where we now have five bonded atoms. That means every electronic domain gets its own bonded atom. And now if we look at the shape of that molecule, we can see it's also a trigonal bipyramid, which again, anytime you have a bonded atom on every electron domain, the name of the, ge the electronic geometry is the same as the name of the molecule shape or geometry. <clears throat> now going back to these, obviously this is a 90 degree angle. And here, the, between the equatorial positions, right here and here, we know that these equatorial positions are approximately 120 degrees. Because of this lone pair, these bond angles will be slightly less. Here again, 90 degrees. And the bond angles between the equatorial positions, 120 degrees. Okay? And this brings us to the octahedral electronic geometries. We're only going to focus on three variations where we have four, five, and six bonded atoms. When I have four bonded atoms, I'm going to have two lone pairs. So those lone pairs, being the largest clouds of electron density, being the most repulsive of each other, want to be as far apart from their neighbors as possible, and especially as far apart from each other as possible. So generally what that means is the lone pairs are going to go on opposite sides of the atom. In an octahedral geometry, electron domain geometry, there are no 120 degree angles. All of these are 90 degree angles. We have a North Pole, South Pole, and four around the equator, so all of these angles are now 90 degrees. Which means that it doesn't matter if I put the lone pairs at the North Pole, South Pole, or on the equator, because they're all equivalent positions at this point. As long as I put the lone pairs on opposite sides of the molecule, I'll go ahead and put my lone pairs on the equatorial positions opposite sides of the molecule. And so I end up with this uh, shape here. Notice now that I have a 90 degree angles here between my bonded atoms. And if I look for the molecular shape, ignoring lone pairs, I just see these bonded atoms and the central atom and they are all in the same plane as each other forming a square and so we call this molecular shape square planar p l a n a r for planar okay if we move on for the octahedral electronic geometry with five bonded atoms Again, all of these positions are equivalent, so it doesn't matter where the lone pair goes. This time I'm going to put the lone pair at the south pole because I think it will be easier to see the shape that's formed. But again, the south pole is the same as one of the equatorial positions. But now you can see that there is a 90 degree angle between the north pole and each of the equatorial positions probably going to be slightly less than 90 degrees because this lone pair is pushing those bonds away and, and making this angle a little bit smaller than 90. But now you can see the shape that is formed. We have a little pyramid here. Here's the top of the pyramid. And these four bonded atoms form the base of the pyramid. 
So I have a square-based pyramid, so I call it a square pyramid. Finally, the most, the easiest one to, to deal with is when we have a bonded atom on every electron domain. And so I have six electron domains, six bonded atoms. There are no lone pairs. All of the bonded atoms are considered as part of the shape. Therefore, the electronic geometry is octahedral and the molecule's shape is octahedral as well. And here again, I've got 90 degree angles. Okay. Now, you will want to get a model kit and spend some time with these models, building them. Build the electronic geometry first, then put your bonded atoms on there, and make sure that you can see in three dimensions how these shapes arise. Sometimes it's a little difficult seeing them when we just draw them on a two-dimensional surface. And hopefully that will give you a little bit better perspective about what's happening here as we draw electronic domain geometry and then the molecular geometry or the shape of the molecule. Thank you.